first I wanted to be a drummer. And they were like, no, nah, it's too loud, you know, we're going to buy you a guitar. And I bought a guitar, I took lessons for like a week, quit. Wanted to play Lego Batman. As I got towards high school, this is my eighth grade, I was like, I really want to do this again. And I was like, I didn't want a teacher. I didn't want someone telling me this is how you had to do it. So I took the old guitar I had, fixed it up a little bit, uh, learned to read like tabs, and just started playing songs I wanted to play. And that's how I kind of figured out guitar. High school time, took music theory. Only kid that was not classically trained, but passed with an A. And um, ever since then, about high school, I, you know, I met Cameron, and we both wanted to make music, and then we started just making music from high school on. So yeah, 2019, it was me, uh, Cameron, and Dalton. We were called Scarlet Underfire. I don't know if you want to say that, but uh, that was that was the band before. And then COVID hit. We kind of broke up, and then got back together. 2022. Was that it? Yes. Yeah, 2022. You're right. We yeah. moved in the house. Yeah. And then uh, we started jamming in the house, and then yeah. he was like, "Hey, I wanna, I wanna jam." And Cause me, Cameron, and him lived together. Yeah. Oh so yeah. So Dalton would come over and screw around, and then I'd be like, "Oh, I have a guitar too. I can." I can do this, and after a while, it just became a thing. I was like, oh, we should probably join, and we should do something together, and then that's kind of how it got started, and then uh, well, we've been together like a year and a half now, something like that. Well, just, yeah, yeah. just recently, we added uh, Gabe on extra guitar. He used to be our filling bassist, but then we're like, you know, we like you. You're a cool guy. Yeah. He has a, a lot of like sampler stuff and cool effects and whatever, so we just added him as a third guitarist recently, so it's kind of been the, the inception of the band as of this point but yeah. uh, and right now in the current iteration I'm playing like third guitar which is I've always wanted to be in a band with three guitars because it's like for one it's really full like you were saying mm -hmm. but it just gives us a chance to kind of like work on everybody's roles like if you have three guitars that means you have like three different roles that each guitar can um, like assume for each and it's just like for the for like the future coming up when it's like the five of us writing and like I can bring in an idea or like bring in something new to it it will like enhance the role of each guitar and I'm very excited for that kind of thing so yeah yeah I think for me I think I think Dalton feels the same way but I think for me and Dalton it's like a like when we write stuff it's like very therapeutic because like write lyrics and like write songs like you put a lot of kind of emotion and like background into it and so to be able to play that and like like I said we're very quiet vocalists so like people don't necessarily always know what we're saying but like it's kind of like a therapy session every single time that we play together because it's like a big release of emotion like whether that been just like in the in the past week or the past few months like when you get to play a show and like write stuff that like really is from the heart and like get to just like release it to people and they like it and they want to like hear more of it it's it's very like cathartic in a way that's why I, that's why i write and that's why i like writing for it might not be commercially great and successful or whatever but like for the people who do like it and the people who do hear it and want to hear more like that's that's kind of enough for me to keep keep writing what i do yeah, so i always i was always writing songs so i guess that was a way for me to express myself and especially like there's a time in my life where I didn't have a guitar and I had to go straight to therapy because it was my only outlet I knew. And so a lot of it, especially on stage, I'm aggressive. I like beat everything. My guitar has duct tape on it now. That's just how I get a lot of emotion out is through me playing. It was shoegaze, you know, it's a lot of noise. So I guess I try to paint my pain with all that noise. I think for like writing wise with Scarlett, we're all just really good musicians and we we're very good at piggybacking off of each other with ideas and like writing styles and we kind of just understand what we're all saying in, in a weird way without being forward about it. And uh, it's cool to do that because with writing things, you know, you bring out a basis of an idea and you just get through it. But what takes writing a song is playing it a bunch of times, is playing it live, being nervous, having fun with it. You know, being goofy, being serious, being bad. And so doing that with writing a song creates a perfect iteration of what it is. Because, you know, you watch live videos of hundreds of thousands of bands and they have a different way of playing this. And it's 
fun live and it's goofy, but you know, in the studio it's very refined, very good, very round, very even. So doing that, you know. But uh, with our newer songs that we've been writing, we just we're not trying to copy anything we've done previously. We're trying to like keep our sound and the fun behind it and our intensity and whatnot. But at the same time, we're still trying to like incorporate Gabe, and we're trying to incorporate you know something to challenge us rather than just playing the same formula. Like every time I put in a drum part, it's like I've done that before. Let me try something different, and then I'm like, I didn't know I could do that, and then that levels me up, and then Dalton figures out a way to do this different. And then Austin's like, oh, I could do this lead part. And Gabe's like, oh, have you guys ever heard of this? And Barry's like, you know, we all just uh, do our thing. I think at the end of the day, it's all that we've just gained confidence in yeah. ourselves. I remember, like, the first few shows, like, I didn't know any of the lyrics. No one knew any of the lyrics. We barely knew, like, the music or the chords or anything. Mm -hmm. And, like, we didn't know what we were playing for in the first place. And I think that over time, like, we've all kind of, like, communicated that's another thing communication confidence and like we kind of know what we're going for now and yeah, like we found out what works for all of us today. yeah versus and, yeah the earlier stuff that we don't play anymore it's just kind of a little unstructured yeah. just all over the place but we found what makes us yeah. us now and there's times that we'll be playing live and like we'll hit a chord or we'll hit a a chorus and we'll all look at each other with like the stank face and be like yeah this is us like this yeah. is scarlet this is what we do this is what we like and then we just keep on building upon that. And like, I think it's kind of how we got our sound from there. It was always a sound I was very fond of. And my goal is I want to make it accessible because the artist you want to grow. But I'm not really in it for the money. I have a day job. I got a career if I wanted it. But it's about how you tell people this is like my story. This is what we're performing. This is our message. How you relate to it is how you get there. But I want you there. shows and you have people that are like man I just want to go out and then it all happened all at once where people were like finally out and they had probably all this music written at least that's what happened with me I wrote a ton of music over COVID Columbia scene and Greenville scene and even Charleston scene like like there's so many bands and like people making bands and I think it's because of COVID people are like at home and they're bored they're either writing music or like pining for shows and you have people that are like, man, I just want to go out. And then it all happened all at once, where people were like, finally out. And they had probably all this music written. At least that's what happened with me. I wrote a ton of music over COVID. I get when I play, really. I could, I could really play any genre. I just enjoy having my own creative and having my own thing that I do. So I like to pull from a lot of different bands. And so I like putting my own touch on things. Like when joining other bands, you take their music and you add you know, what you want to it. And you just... That's the feeling you get from writing and playing and coming together as a whole and just kind of seeing like where you started with a song and then where it is to this day. Just like the writing process and the feeling of becoming a better musician with writing and whatnot. But yeah, just the memories for me. Yeah, rather it's because we had played in front of five people. Yeah. That's how we started off. Some yeah, some of our like best shows that I've ever had like like the best time I ever had like we played in front of like. Three people, three people, but we yeah. had so much fun, and like, it's just like at the end of the day, it's all passion that like keeps me going. Cause like, sometimes we haven't had that great of a turnout, or like we've lost money on gas to get there and back. And I'm just like, I love playing music so much for people, and I love like the memories that I make with 
these guys and people that I meet. I've met so many cool people yeah. just, like, in the last year with, like, the whole Greenville and Charleston and Charlotte, like, all those scenes. Dude, there's so many, like, genuine people. I'm like, dude, if I never, like, if I stopped doing this, like, three months in, I would have never met, like, half the cool people that I know now. Yeah. Less, like, I've had less the opportunities, this, that, and the other. So it's all a combination of why I guess I keep on going. I think we have the same yeah. same reason for doing so, but... So after, like, being in a band and learning about the entire scene as a whole, I was so blown away because, you know, this band that I like contains these members, which are also in this band, which are also in this band, which run this place, and it's like, oh, okay. And that's kind of how Sumter was for us, like how we had Scarlet, and then another band that was in at the time, Marble House, and then another band, another band, we were all just kind of jamming in this one, like, house. And so then we made a little venue out there, and we pulled, like, almost 200 people, 200 to 300 people one day, and just getting these bands from... Florida and North Carolina and uh, Louisiana and it was just kind of crazy and you know when I stopped doing that when I moved here uh, to Columbia it's like I still see Sumter faces now coming to stuff in Columbia because Columbia is only a 50 minute drive like from here to Sumter just 50 minutes and so all these people are like I didn't know there was a music scene I didn't know like people don't know enough about what is local and so there needs to be a lot more local support and like local knowledge like it will continue to go upwards if there's new bands, there's something cool that adds to the scene. Because at a certain point, I mean, like trends do, things will get stale. It always happens. But if there's something that can innovate on what's going on, then it will stay alive. But when it comes to like businesses and all that, everything is inflated. So that's, that's, that's government issues. <laughs> we won't go too much detail, but... um. For the scene, definitely. I think if new bands come, it will help us a lot. I think that everyone in like South Carolina scene realizes that, and that's why they do it. Yeah. Like I think people realize here, like no one's gonna start a scene for you. It's South Carolina. Like we're not. There might be like one or two bands that I know have made it to like somewhat of a significant level of like fame or whatever. Not that that's the end goal or whatever, but like I think that like kids here just like know that like. If they don't start stuff themselves, like, nothing's ever going to happen. And there's, a, like, Tua Lingua. Tua Lingua is, like, just ran by a bunch of kids that just have, like, so much passion for music. Same with Melon Bar and all that stuff. Like, there's not, like, a, there's not, like, a big, there's not these, like, big venues run by these big people with a lot of influence. It's just kids who, like, realize that, like, if they don't do it themselves and they have that much, like, passion for music, no one's going to do it for them. And I think that's, like, why the entire... South Carolina, South, ooh, South Carolina scene works like the way it does is because kids just like want to do it and then they go and do it and then it becomes this, the big thing it is now or not the big thing but moderately sized thing that it is now mm-hmm. still good though yeah. Like, yeah house shows are still that too fun shout out to uh, coverage coverage <laughs> yeah. Yeah. shout out yeah. to coverage yeah 